Hey guys, welcome to, to Unbiased Rugby. Uh, so, obviously the Lions have just, uh, well they did it yesterday, I was, I was going to do the show straight afterwards, but I, I ran out of light. So I, I couldn't really record it last night, so obviously I decided to do it today. Uh, so the Lions, uh, I, I felt, beat the Waratahs fairly convincingly uh, in the end. Uh, it was it was quite strange that both both games for the semi-finals ended up with an uh, 18 point difference between the two sides. So of the semi of the four teams in the semi-finals, I, I, I feel the 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 two best teams, uh, playing teams for that weekend, uh, made it through. So I, I I honestly believe the Crusaders thoroughly deserved the win, and so did the Lions. Uh, so yeah, it's going to obviously set up uh, another uh, Lions Crusaders final in, in Christchurch next week, and. Uh, Feeling quite vindicated with my my prediction at the, at the beginning of the season that I said it was going to be another Lions Crusaders final. Uh, I, I must admit the Lions haven't had such a great season this year, but uh, you know somebody put it into context the other day and they say you know they lost their the their head coach, they lost their defence coach, they haven't had Jocker Creel this whole year, uh, they lost uh, Ruin Ackerman, uh, so they've lost quite a few players. Uh, Ruin Janssen from Rendsburg also. Uh, was fairly injured this year, so the players that they normally have, and obviously Whiteley was was out most of the season. Malcolm Marks was injured, so if you put it into context of where they are as a team, uh, and all those setbacks, and they still made a final, it's it just goes to show the character of the side. Uh, I, 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 look, I, I was fairly nervous before the before the start of the game. You know, as a as a South African supporter, it's been become quite. Uh, Quite nerve-wracking watching games. Uh, I think uh, from when we lost to Japan years and years ago, uh, it's it, it, ma it always makes it a fairly nervous. And you know, it used to be that I, I could put my complete faith in the side, and it, things would just happen. It's just now it just seems a bit uh, topsy turvy. And but, but besides that, uh, uh, so I was fairly nervous. But uh, Gordon, he was he was fairly comfortable. He said the the Lions are going to win quite quite convincingly, and, and in the end they did. Yeah, it was 19 all at half time, and uh, the tries that got through by uh, the the Waratahs, two of them were extremely soft. Uh, I don't know why the Lions let them through. Uh, and then some of the, the the previous the tries in the first half for the Lions were just from pure individual brilliance from uh, Fio Duante. That was a, a sublime try where he kicked ahead, caught it, and, and ran. And it just shows you the kind of speed that uh, that young guy has. Uh, real, real, real asset to the Lions and to the Springboks going forward. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break down the game a little bit. Uh, so I, I felt in the first half the Lions just they did they did it again. They went 14 points down. I just don't think they they can do something like that against the Crusaders or any New Zealand side. They'll, I think they'll be absolutely punished. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, next week they're just gonna have to they're gonna have to show up their defence in the first. Uh, in the first 20 minutes and I think also also show up the defense after they've just scored because they seem to let through tries uh, after they've they've just scored so yeah there's, there's still there's still an issue on, on defense uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the negatives first and then I'll talk about the positives I, I, I still you know I watched uh, Andres Kutsia last year and, and he used to really frustrate me yes the guy's got great run meters and and but he just he never passes and and there was one one moment and I, I was in the second half he did the complete line break there literally there were four players and he just had he just he just had to offload and there would have been three extra line players down the line scored the try and it was it was a try begging to happen and he just went straight into contact and he just seems to do that week on uh, week in and week out and and I think he's a brilliant player. I think he's I think he's got he's got the absolute pedigree to be able to play it at uh, at international level. It's just he just really needs to learn uh, an, another an offload. He's not like a Lamape who can just tackle bust and just literally go straight through a player. So he, he just doesn't have that kind of bulk to be that kind of physical player. So I'm hoping when he goes when he goes and plays up north that. Uh, I think he has gone up north, or maybe he's signed for another year with the Lions. I'm just hoping that he can he can start he can learn that offload game because every single other aspect of his game is just rock solid. He's good under the high ball. He's good on counter attack. Uh, it's just it's just that offload and and realizing 
that there are other players on the field and he doesn't have to take the ball into contact every single time. And uh, I remember when we were growing up, you know, when you were playing, you didn't want to sell sell the next person down the line, down the river. You know, you went into contact to, to take it instead of the man next to you taking the hit. And that was that maybe it might be a forwards thing. But, you know, the game has changed. You know, it's, it's, it is all about offload and keeping that ball alive. Uh, the the other the other player that uh, that frustrated me was Harold Forster. Also, I suffered from the same thing. I, just look at on the outside of him. He's got Lionel Mapu, who's a sublime uh, rugby player, uh, quite 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 big player. And then on the outside of him, there was Scusson and there's a few Duante. You know, these are these are world class Springbok wingers. And uh, Harold Forster was the same. He just he just didn't seem to want to pass down the line. Uh, the game changed when uh, the, the forwards got more involved uh, uh, and it, it just went to show that it, forward dominance is, is that rolling maul of the, of the lines is, is impressive. But at the same time, you know, the Waratahs combating that uh, rolling maul was very, very weak. Uh, a side like the Crusaders who they either sack or they have quite a wide front end or, or they get you to pivot around the side you know, so they, they have ways of con uh, combating uh, the driving wall. So I don't think it's going to have the same effect to them uh, as next week. But it's still an impressive weapon for, for both teams. Uh, uh, coming through to the forwards, I think all the forwards stood up. Uh, I don't think not one of them uh, had, a, had a bad game. It uh, just goes to show uh, Quacha Smith, now that he's done the, the trans transition from um, 7s to 15s, He's really, really getting to his own, and you can see the skills that he has at uh, the seven skills coming across, because literally he, he, he busted straight through a couple of. Uh, it was quite weak defence on the on the Waratah side, but but yeah, oh, the guy, the guy's a, a, an absolute machine. Great work work ethic. Same with uh, Frank Amost has got great work work ethic. Even the props had great work ethic. Uh, Malcolm Marks is just. I, I did. There were one or two moments where I, I felt he was getting a bit frustrated. Uh, he was getting a bit angry, and you don't normally see Malcolm Marks like that. Uh, he's normally quite cool and calm, and he just seemed to. Uh, the, I think the Waratah, the, the Waratah's hooker, really got under his skin, uh, and I, I'm hoping that he, he he relaxes for 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 next week. On the Waratah side, uh, uh, it was it was quite a strange way, the way that they were playing because they were. Playing fairly deep, and the Lions defend. The Lions doesn't. They don't play rush defense, and I don't know why they were playing so deep. But they didn't have to. They could have stayed further on the line, uh, but it worked for them. They did score tries, uh, but I, I, I do think that they they were playing themselves backwards, and because they were playing extremely deep, and I, I, I really, really don't know why. Because they've got some amazing players, uh, especially when they were doing the loop arounds. Uh, they really had the the, the Lions uh, ticket at that point. And I don't know why they didn't carry on with that. They just seemed to just lose lose one or two. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It just goes to show it's difficult to travel, and uh, and it's difficult to travel and play at altitude. Uh, so everything that was against the Waratahs this week is going to be against the Lions this this coming weekend uh, in, in Christchurch. Look, I know what's going to happen this week. I'm going to watch all the videos this week. All the people are going to do their predictions, and they're just going to say it's going to be a complete walkover from from the Crusaders. Uh, on paper, look, uh, the, the Crusaders are, are the front. Their front five all all blacks. Uh, so uh, the, the front five for the the the, the uh, Lions would have to really really step it up. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, I know, I just know everyone's going to call the the Crusaders to win, and I think a lot of South Africans are going to also call the Crusaders to win. Uh, yeah, in my head, uh, uh, if I start thinking about it logically, I think you know, yes, you know, it's, it's that. Oh, I'm not even going to say it. I'll wait for the for the week, and I'll hear what everyone else has to say, and then I'll I'll make my prediction. Obviously, I'm going to say the Lions are going to win. And uh, but yeah, look, I just think according to those two games, the two best teams for that weekend got into the final. Uh, regardless of how those teams got to that point, the two best teams got into the final. Uh, I, was, I was actually going through some stats, and I didn't hadn't even realised that Malcolm Marx was in eleven tries. You know, that's that's 
arguably the best try scorer for for the for the from from the South African side or even from the whole African conference, top try scorer, and that's that's very very impressive. I think the, I think Akira Oani is is Rico Ioane, Akira Ioane. He's I think he's next on eight, and uh, it just goes to show what what a what an, a magnificent player he is, and I, I arguably must be best South African player, MVP, you know, most valuable player in South Africa at the moment. Uh, 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 the same same kind of thing, you know. It's I, I try to look at a pack like like the All Blacks pack, and for me, the standout player from from on the All Black side has, has always been uh, oh <laughs> now I forget his name, Brady Retallick, and uh, I've I've always I've always rated him as play. Even last year, I thought I thought he should have been up for uh, player of the year. Uh, so I think Brady Retallick's on that kind of same kind of level. It's just. He's just a step above everybody else, and I'd say there's about five players on the planet that that are literally the best. And, I'm, and I'm, at the at the moment, Mal Malcolm Arthur must be one of them. And I'm not, and, and I don't think that's been uh, that's been very biased at all. I think the guy is 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 a sublime rugby player. He knows how to offload. He knows how to steal ball. He knows how to tackle bust. Uh, he knows how to intercept. Uh, and and obviously he knows how to throw and he knows how to hook the ball. You know that's that's a multitude of skills that the guy brings. So look uh, for for me, he's going to have to really step up next week. Warren Whiteley's going to have to step up. Mostert's going to have to play the game of his life. Uh, Yankees is just hopefully it's not raining. Uh, Yankees is just going to have to play the most sublime game that he's ever played. Uh, I, I think the uh, the wingers for the South uh, for the Lions are just are, are very very good. But yeah. I enjoyed the game. Um, I'm gonna be honest. Nice glass, glass of wine. Everyone was around me watching, and and it was enjoyable. I must admit, I've been trying to find a, a lion's cap, and you know, Jane, my wife, she she searched the whole of Saturday, trying to find me one at, at a shopping centre. I went down the hill today uh, to Somerset to try get uh, to try find a cap, and there's a cap. They know it. There's absolutely no lions. Well, there were a couple of jerseys, but I wasn't prepared to pay that for. For, for a jersey I'll, for next year maybe but yeah uh, as a South African I'm super happy that the Lions got through to uh, through to the finals uh, it's going to be a great weekend next weekend and may the best team win but listen guys I hope you have a great week and I'll chat to you soon cheers bye